All right, welcome back to Lucid's Lessons. Today we are continuing where we left off, just with some movement tech and, you know, little tips and tricks on the things going on with these maps that many people have been asking about for so long now. Uh, I'm getting my settings set up so we can just kind of move around in peace in the academy. Um, but let's just jump right into it. Hopefully you guys learn some more things today. So, this is a very highly requested jump that many people take note of, have no idea how I do it consistently, and some people have their ways, there's been videos that like, you do this, you do that, and then maybe you get the jump, I have the way that you're hitting this jump every single time, alright, as long as you follow these steps, so, first important thing, you need to always be landing on these little uh, fuse boxes, whatever these are, right here, every time, always need to be, and to make this happen, it's always much easier to just always hold forward, because as long as you're holding forward, you'll be walking into this bigger box. And then you need to make sure that you're facing this wall. Alright. Now, how I do this is I'm always holding crouch and always holding forward. So as you can see, I'm kind of moving forward this entire time. But I'm not falling out. I'm still just kind of holding forward. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold forward. And what I'm going to do while holding forward and holding crouch this entire time is I'm going to make sure that my feet are landing here. So while I'm holding forward and holding uh, crouch, I'm going to turn. I'm not going to move my stick at all. I'm not going to move my stick to the left. I'm not going to move my stick to the right at all. I'm going to just keep holding crouch and keep holding forward the entire time. It is pretty much always in the right stick uh, throughout this. So getting into this spot, kind of annoying. Just kind of pushes you out a little bit. But as you can see, I'm holding forward, facing the wall, and I miss my jump. You're going to hold forward, facing this wall, and you're going to hold forward, and you're going to jump onto this lip. Onto this, just think of it as a mini ramp. As long as you're holding forward the entire time and holding crouch, you don't even really need to hold crouch necessarily, but it makes it a lot more consistent. You are going to just, as long as you land on this, it is very easy to land on it. You just need to aim. You just need to aim right at the at this little, I guess, ramp. And as long as you had the right momentum f going forward into it while holding crouch, it really sets you up almost perfectly to make sure that your feet are always catching that little lip. And again, you just treat it like a little ramp. You're actually not going to fall off of it. As you can see, like I was able to land on it and then even take like almost a half a step forward. So it's not like you need to like instantly spam jump as soon as you do that. Because if, if you happen to spam jump... You almost will fall out of it a lot of times, or you're just not going to make it. So, like, you take a single step as soon as you hear your feet collide, and you you know you just build up that uh that sort of uh, muscle memory, or just you know you just build it up. You can hear it. You can you can feel it enough times once you start utilizing these tips, and you just kind of swing. You're just kind of hitting a swing off of the initial push of uh off these boxes. And as long as you're not jumping too early, you will be able to make it up to the sandbags almost guaranteed every single time. As long as you do exactly that way. There's definitely different ways to do it. There's a few different spots. However, if like you're sitting right here and then like you're jumping for it and then like you try to jump on like this lip, a lot of times it'll push you off. Um, that's why I always just trust this ramp. This ramp. Um, because like it is, it is very solid. As long as you have the setup, in the way that I do, it is literally a completely solid object to walk on. Um, you can't really sit on it, but you again, that's not what we need. We just need to set ourselves up for the correct uh, correct jump here. That's it. Again, the uh, honestly, the setup right here can be the most annoying part sometimes, especially in the heat of the moment. But you do that, you hit the jump, easy. All right. Um, something else that's kind of small that had been brought up before. But I'm just going to like rehash on it. There's actually this camera right here <clears throat> that you can set yourself up on. It's a little awkward to get into sometimes, but you actually can sit on this camera inside of this space. And uh, quite a nerdy spot, but uh, not too useful. But it's it's, it's kind of nice. It's pretty nice. It can be it can be used. So you know, use at your own discretion. Um, this exact same concept that I use for the key door jump can be applied for this small door and these angles right here. And I used to use this a lot more 
I haven't really had to, but I still try to go for it every once in a while. But you can treat these as very solid objects, and you just jump straight into it. However, this is a very weird jump because you need to make sure that you're trying to land your feet on this, but you can't move forward, backwards, anything. You can't move your left stick, like, at all as soon as your feet collide with this thing. So that's why, like, you almost have to... You almost need to, like, hold crouch going into it and then let go of crouch, like, as you're in the air. And then don't move your left stick, like, at all. As soon as, like, you you feel like you're about to land into it. You can, you can hold crouch, really, the entire time while you're in it. I just find that if I almost release crouch being on top of it, I sometimes almost move my left stick. So it's a very, it's a very fine line. See, I, I even just let go of crouch here, and it's honestly fine. But, again, it's very sensitive. This is a very sensitive. I'm going to move my stick just a little bit. You can move just a little bit, but if you happen to move just enough, it's going to do that exact same thing. You can do the same thing from over here. You want to just hold crouch. I, I think holding crouch is the best option for the initial jump because it just gives you enough of a slow momentum uh, burst of movement that it allows you to safely make it onto this corner without like uh, jumping on it too easily. Because if you jump into it normally... I don't know, it just feels like you have too much momentum falling down uh, due to the nature of like this, the, the, the strafe speed being just a little bit too much. Just being a little bit too much. As you can see, it's just like, just not really catching. Maybe I'm not jumping high enough, but I mean, it, it still works. It still does work. I just find it to be more consistent for myself if I'm, if I'm holding crouch. Um, it feels like I'm able to like wedge myself in there much, much more easily. Um... Now, I'm not sure how many people really are aware of this, but this is actually a ledge that you can hit a curb slide on. To hit your way down into this tunnel, bottom mid. Very useful. You can also still use it to kind of hit towards uh, the big door, but not nearly as useful for that. It'd be kind of awkward to hit it, but still something. Something to keep in mind. All right, and now, uh, this is a spot that people really... <laughs> haven't used and people remember it at least for Ola I think in the first event he happened to like find his way in here and find himself like kind of jumping up here to like survive and it became a, a pretty popular clip at least from that first event um because he was just very difficult to kill however this isn't just a spot that you can kind of like milk in pretty hard you can actually sit up here in this corner if you come at it from the right angle which I will show now there you go Okay, well, you kind of get the gist of it. There is a specific spot, though, like so, and you're just locked in. You just don't move. As long as you're not drifting, it is perfectly fine, perfectly safe. If you move your stick even a little bit, though, you start sliding out. So how do you do this? What I like to do and what I shoot for is there's almost like a darker spot right here that you see. And I like to land my feet. I hold crouch, like I, I just hold a crouch jump, landing right about here. And once I do that, once I'm, like, landing further up, I like to push forward most of the time. And if you do that, you push yourself all the way forward. If you do it a little too much, it'll, it'll force you out like so. But you can feel yourself moving into a corner, like, almost an invisible corner, um, by the time you are wedging yourself into there. But once you're up here, you're up here, really. Except right there. I think there's a little bit of drift on my stick, so I think that can make it a little bit harder. Either way, there is like a, essentially a zone right here that you are sitting on top of. And as long as you are not moving, you will be safe. But you have to, you, to get into this corner, like essentially here, you have to start over here. That, that's, I think, the gist of this nerdy ass corner to find yourself in. Um, but it is, it is very awkward. It can be very awkward. Honestly, probably, probably landing somewhere close to here is where I think I'm finding myself to uh, gravitate towards. Yeah, okay. So not so much to the left. Over here, you want to land almost directly above this dark spot right here. And again, I want to reiterate, this is very important for a lot of jumps, to find, like, guides and find certain things that you can create consistency for you. That is what's needed for a lot of... Uh, a lot of these things that I'm showing you and how I've been able to come become more consistent in regards to all the movement, uh, especially just certain jumps like the key door and certain like big door jumps on Bazaar and things like that. Moving on, something small that I don't think many people utilize still is this jump from the dummy door. You can easily be trapped right here and like you don't want to turn your back to like 
jump up this way or even like back up far enough, you can be sitting right at this edge and just instantly jump off that box to get back out. Now, this can be a weird jump to hit sometimes. Like if you are not uh, holding forward or if you like happen to jump into it at an angle, it's just one of those things where like if you think you're going to bonk your head here, that's what I like to shoot for. Just bonk your head on like this, this, uh, this block right here. This uh, this door frame, I guess. And as long as you hit your hit your head right against it, you're essentially gonna land on this box. And you don't even need to stand on the box. You can just land on it and then press jump instantly, and you're out. You're just out of there. And that just makes things a lot easier. But it is a very very effective. Uh, way to navigate out especially if somebody's like around the corner with a heat wave like ready to push you and you just want to you don't want to turn your back like at all but uh, i think the important thing is just hold forward the entire time as long as you are you know right as you're landing into the box because if you're not holding forward the entire time you you almost like lend yourself to uh not hitting that jump you're, you're probably gonna get bonked away like you're gonna just fall to the corner fall out and then somebody's just ready to push you instantly quick tip for this curb slide right here uh, to go top minute because if you try to hit that curb slide off of the tire crate here you're really not going to hit it i don't i don't even think it's possible no matter what um so people kind of ask me about this i think most of the top players understand this uh pretty well but nonetheless if you are trying to hit this curb slide to you know just get some momentum top mid you need to make sure that you're hitting the diagonal on this because as you can see there's an elevation it's enough elevation that it's disrupting your like momentum so you need to You'll, you'll see, I'm going to hit like a diagonal and then turn back around to make sure that I'm hitting this. This might have also been covered in other videos as well. Um, but again, enough people have asked me that I feel like in my video, it's very beneficial to just bring it up. Moving our way towards tower. Um, something very basic, but you know, most people try to hit the jump here, like going top tower. However, something to just open your eyes a little bit is like you can actually hit this jump to round the corner on the left side. Very, very useful for people who are just kind of like camping up here and you are just trying to approach differently because it's so basic to always be coming from this angle. Um, and people are <clears throat> always pretty much expecting that angle um, to do that. Something that I also like to do as well is to like use a drop wall, just look straight up and just come on up. Or you can, no, this is also good, just coming straight up from here. But you don't need to like jump up. Uh, you don't need to like jump up and then throw it. You can just look straight up and then, well now I have to wait, but. You don't have to jump up to throw it. You can just look straight up, and it'll land. And if you wait long enough at the right time, you know, your shield is up, and then you're fighting from a, a drop ball right here. Just That's just a little tip uh, to throw in. But the most important thing that I was talking about has to still do with, you know, this, this little slide around the corner here to make sure you are just getting around this. Very, very effective. Um, all right. Okay, and now we're making our way down. Something real quick, real quick note is that these boxes are actually uh, physical now. They used to not be so physical, but you know you can maybe hit some jumps in a ninja or something around uh, some people off of these uh, these little fuse boxes right here. So just a quick side note. Now to the one of the jumps that's probably like the most famous in the game. Like people just know about this one the most consistent, uh, most consistently. Everyone just kind of knows about it. This jump is very weird. Um, even myself now, I find it hard to hit consistently. Um, I really don't have the best like tells on like where I need to be looking. However, it is it, very much a feeling it out and like just a couple of general concepts that I use for this jump to make it consistent enough is you have A, you don't really need to be anywhere specific on this box. I think being more towards the center does help a little bit, but like you can hit this jump anywhere um, as long as you jump at the right time. Everything kind of changes whenever you start moving to different sides um but you don't need to be like in a very specific spot on the box i do like to just be in the center and what i try to shoot for is like you're not trying to jump for this corner you're trying to like almost jump out and then wrap around um to hit the jump like like so so you're just trying to almost move slowly you got to hit the jump late and then you're going to hit the corner here. That's more so what you're, you're shooting for. You're not trying to clamber here. You're trying to clamber over here on that on that corner. 
And it's kind of like hard to envision sometimes whenever you're just coming at it, and especially like in an intense moment when you need to be in the fight. And you don't need to be sprinting. I think sprinting can help, um, but at, at the same time it can also be... Uh, it can be a little dangerous because uh, if you sprint to almost get, like, give yourself more, more momentum, it can shoot you off if you're jumping too early or too late. So what I like to do is almost aim for these trees, just look out that way, jump a bit later... Whenever you start walking forward, just late walk, jump, hit that turn. You just got to hit that turn. I don't really like walking at a diagonal, trying to go like that <clears throat> off of this. What I used to do before as well, I'll just throw this in as like a suggestion, is I used to aim at this and then walk late, and I almost didn't have to move my reticle at all. It's like that's one thing that I was like trying to figure out. I was like, how do I just not move my reticle at all? And it's like I can do this where I walk on like a diagonal, and then I'll just like kind of hit the jump. However, it's very, it can be very awkward, and I felt like in the most important moments, I was missing it more often than not. So, you know, whatever works for you, but this is still fairly consistent. Just kind of like holding, I almost hold to the right whenever I do this. Like, I'm, I'm kind of standing in the middle of the box, I'm looking at this gray pillar, and I just hold, like, almost to the right. Directly to the right. And that is also very effective. Um... All it really comes down to for a lot of these jumps is practice. Like even if I even if you have all these methods, you are not in the most consistent fashion going to be hitting these jumps. You really just have to make sure that you're able to effectively do it when nothing's going on. And if you can when nothing's going on, then your chances for when everything is going on um, astronomically increase. So either one I think is very effective. I think they both work very well. Uh, you just let me know what you uh, you guys think is the best for you, but at least you have some options. Uh, one thing I even forgot to mention that I don't see a lot of people utilize a lot is actually this ledge right here. Um, I've been using this for a while, but it is very effective at being just an off angle for a lot of people. Because so many times, like, you come down here, you're ready to fight, you're looking at the positive pistol, you're looking at, like, pillars where you think people are going to be heading. You're not ready to look up whenever you're coming down here, so... You know, I, I really advise people to utilize this spot when you're in a pinch and you just have nowhere to go. If you have nowhere to go, I highly, highly, highly think you should be using uh, this corner so that you can get like a good nade, just maybe a good first or shot or two. Um, definitely take full advantage of it while you can. And now moving on, something that a lot of people do, very normal, very natural, and uh, has been in the game since the beginning. People are always just hitting, you know, the repulse jumps to hit top uh, top bridge. However, I'm going to give you a suggestions or a few suggestions to change up your approach just so that you can be a little different. Now, if you are standing, as you can see, this this uh, little mound of dirt is a little bit taller than if you're standing like right here, even. You can still make it up, but you almost have to hit a clamber. Or I think you do have to hit the clamber. However, if you're standing like right at this wall, you can just make it up instantly and you're ready to fight. People still hear the, hear the repulse, but like everyone's looking up like ready to fight trying to, like, snipe the guy who's in the air, and then you're just, you know, you're literally just, you have so much hang time while you're up here. You can always, like, kind of come in late, but that makes it almost a little bit awkward, where if you just, you don't have to jump, you don't have to hold crouch, you just look down the ground, just hit repulse, and you move. Um, there's honestly quite a few spots on a few maps that have things like this, where things are just better if you don't actually jump and repulse. It's, it's, a, it's a habit, for sure, but I highly recommend just getting into a habit for some of these spots to not jump and repulse. Just simply look at the ground, repulse, and then there you go. You're into the fight. And people are already caught off guard because they hear the noise. They're like, where is he at? Looking in the air, and he's not there. Or, same thing, if you're on this side of the map, people always expect you to go to the bridge. People are always expecting that. You can do the same thing that I just explained. You know, obviously, you can hit the jump repulse. People do that all the time, too. Or, you just look down the ground, repulse, and then you can actually clamber. And then you have cover right here to play off these pillars. And you can even do the same thing right here for getting up here to fight towards tower. And there's plenty of times too where like people hit that, hit the repulse tower, and then like you're like ready to fight, but then you're you're in the the air. You're you got hang time now. And people are ready for it. Even if like I think you're gonna be coming from, you know, river, if you are looking at the ground and you have to look back up to fight me sitting top tower, if you're coming up like this, like there's a very good chance that you're still gonna be down a shot. And then you're still in the air, and I'm sitting here just, like, just crouch strafing my ass off, you know? So it, it's honestly best to try to minimize that, that air time. And these positions very much do it. You need to make sure that you really don't have 
um, much distance, because see how far away we are? If I Even if I still do that, I mean, you really still can do it. I find it to be the best that, like, you you want to be able to capitalize on the sound effect of the repulse as much as you can. Because people are going to be so caught off guard <laughs> whenever you are not where they think you are. Another thing, too, that I wasn't, or that I forgot to mention is that you can actually kind of crouch behind here and... Uh, it's not, like, super effective at a uh, cover, but it's pretty close. And it, it does still serve as a... Like, you can't hide behind here entirely. Like, people can still see the top of your head. But it's it's a good thing to have rather than being, you know, just standing out in the open or in the air dropping in. Like, you at least got up quickly and you're, like, ready to fight. Uh, something to be cautious of, though, is if you're standing too close to these pillars, they push you out. Um, so you really don't have enough time to grab the ledge if you're doing that. You, you don't want to be too close. You also don't want to be, like, too far. So you don't get nearly as much time uh, in the air as if you're jumping and then using the repulse. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, the last thing, obviously, is, like, hitting these uh, hitting this curb slide to towards Big Door. Uh, I think a good amount of the professional players know how to utilize it pretty effectively. It's honestly a very awkward one because of the nature of, like, the sandbags that roll around on the ground. They kind of, like, push you around. Um, but this has the exact same type of... Uh, nature as this, you know, sent this roadblock kind of thing has over here. You have to hit a diagonal because you can't really effectively just run straight over it consistently and then get uh, the same uh, normal curb slide boost as you need. You need to almost run on a parallel and then come off of it. And even for me, again, it, it's not easy, so it is a uh, it is something that can still be very awkward. So you just kind of have to feel it out. And then you just get that boost. You can utilize that in a few different ways. Whether it's going big door. Or you're trying to push towards back green. Even tw pushing towards back green though. I think. Let me see if I can. Yeah no you can't hit it off that block. I thought you maybe could. But pushing off towards green. I think I like to usually almost hug this barrier. Just so I can hit the, the ground running a little bit earlier. But. Again, the, the, these sandbags make things very annoying, but they pr they do provide a very, very good uh, means of cutting that corner. Moving on from uh, Live Fire, we are heading over to the Tried and True Recharge. Put on... Let me just put on a Repulse, since that's... Uh, I mean, we do have a grapple on this map, too. Also, just as, like, a quick side note, um, I will be doing more of these videos. Um... In the future, and I think what I'm... You guys can give me suggestions on what you want to see next. I'm thinking for right now, what I actually want to do next is actually, uh, like, nade placements. Like, good nades. Maybe I'll even talk over some other things, but I think that's what comes to mind to me, is, like, some important nade spots, as well as maybe, like, controlling positions. Maybe it'll be, like, a hybrid of, like, the important zones, and, like, where you want to be holding, and, you know, maybe some nade placements along the way. Uh, to kind of coincide with, like, breaking certain setups and whatnot. It'll probably be, like, super basic nades as well as some very interesting ones that I've uh, figured out over time. But we'll go from there. Okay, starting out with Recharge, we have this initial curb slide right here that also, again, very popular. Uh, has been talked about quite a bit. I'm going to reiterate the same thing. Has that same exact problem of, as you can see, you can see on my screen that has that elevation. You need to hit the parallel sort of uh, sprint on it. That's why... Uh, you're going to see people kind of hit weird movement on it, make sure that they can get the boost. Because uh, usually whenever you have the right opportunities to hit this, um, you're not going to be getting shot a lot of times. So you might want to just take it full advantage of, you know, setting yourselves up to get this slide. Because if you try to just sprint and then slide, it's just very normal. It's just a normal slide. doesn't really do anything for you. So you hit the, uh, you hit the parallel sprint, you're good to go. Or you can just stand on top of it as well. If you really feel like you need to set up entirely, you can just kind of already be standing on it and then go. So you can kind of like move up on it, sprint towards it, stop, and then go again. That also works very, very well. Uh, something minor, but also just kind of cool. You can be standing on these barrels and shoot straight through this staircase. Um, there's like a little lip here that you can actually stand on to see through um, a bit better. And then if you're standing further back, you can't really see through all that well, so you need to almost push yourself forward. Uh, just a little tip, in case you guys didn't know. Now, this is a, a slide that I don't know if I've ever actually pulled off. However, for the sake of just explaining, the sake, the sake of this video, 
Um, you can't actually hit a curb slide off of this box up here. Wow, I just hit it for like the first time ever. Okay. Well, there you go. Perfect. I just hit it for the first time ever explaining it. And I'll probably never be able to do it again. Thank you guys for watching. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, that is a very effective slide to get you to that top turbine. Very difficult, though. I'm very surprised just in the midst of talking about it that I'm hitting it. But um, it is very awkward. It is very awkward, I think, to hit this slide. You, you need to make sure you're hitting it, like, at this corner. And that is exactly what I feel like I experience most of the time. I think there is a more, again, we talked about this before in uh, the previous video, where there's almost like a more perfect curb slide that you can hit sometimes. However, it's very weird to, like, set it up or, I don't know, to hit it. It's just very, very awkward. See, like, right there, I feel like I still hit it normally, but it must just not have been, like, the right frame um, of when I'm hitting slides. So, again, you can test it out. Give it a shot yourself. Um, very good, very hard to pull off, though. Okay, so this is, an actually, this is actually a spot that I found that I have never found a really good use for. And I saw it randomly in matchmaking. Funny enough, so shout out to the random matchmaking that figured this out. Is you can sit on this light up here, somehow, some way, by holding crouch, you can use repulse or use grapple. Um, this is kind of like the same thing with catalyst, where you can get to these positions, but this is probably the hardest spot, I think, in the game to sit on, um, on top of this light. I have no means to make it consistent, because like by the time I get up here, my momentum is still too much it is still too much to even keep me afloat here but as you can see my feet do collide with it and there is it is possible to sit up here again very very difficult though i don't even think i'm going to be able to get it in the time frame of what i'm explaining right now um so we're probably just going to need to move on nope oh there you go long enough perfect that's exactly all i could really ask for is that you can sit up there you probably won't be sitting up there for long now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if all these have some collision. I think they all do. Wow, I can't believe I just saw that these lights were all around. Okay, so I guess you maybe have a spot on all of these lights in... Oh, this looks like it has a... Oh, it's an invisible box, I guess? It seems to still have the same collision as all three of these lights. You can sit on all these lights, I suppose, theoretically. Very hard. Very, very difficult. Some basic stuff. Obviously, you can hit a slide, a curve slide, hitting into this corner. What else was I going to show here? Um, something that I don't think a lot of people really know is that you can actually get up to grapple without having to hit a clamber. You just have to make sure that you're timing your um, your jump properly. Uh, whether it is sprint or not, you don't really need to. Um, but you need to make sure you're always holding forward. Also, as I mentioned before, step jump helps a lot with certain things, and this is exactly what step jump does. As you can see, like I'm hitting the ledge and then my, I just sort of glide over like that. Uh, that is very much due to step jump. Um, it helps a lot. It helps a lot in uh, certain situations where like, you're just barely kneecapping uh, like a certain ledge. So this ledge, because I'm not really on this part. I'm standing on this part right here. This is actually a ledge that you can essentially hit the edge of and hit those slides like I showed off in Bazaar as well as Catalyst. Um, and you can even probably hit it going into Turbine or uh, going towards Mangler even uh, from this space. It's very, very difficult to uh, hit it. I haven't really managed it too consistently, but again, it's just more so a, I wish I could say proof of concept. Uh, but it, it is just, these edge cancels are very difficult. This is like super high level movement that I don't think really anybody consistently uses at all, myself included. Um, but, you know, maybe one day it'll be easier to hit or we'll just all be better somehow and understand things a little bit more deeper. So some of the standard stuff, obviously, we can hit these jumps. What I like to do with hitting this jump to top tower is I like to crouch. You don't have to crouch, but I do like crouching quite a bit. Uh, that was without crouching, but I think crouching and then holding kind of to the left and forward always helps. Because you can just kind of, you almost kind of hit like a little, again, like it's almost like a hook formation where you kind of come out and then come back in um, whenever you're hitting it correctly. And usually, as long as you're not bonking your head and you're effectively moving around it, you can hit the clamber very consistently. So you just want to kind of pull out, make sure you get low enough so that you're not hitting your head on this. And there you have it. Like you can hit that 
very, very easily. There are a lot of snap slides on this map that I typically would try to show off. Um, but they're not, there's nothing like, t I don't know. It, it's one of those things where I, I'm very disappointed that the 3 for 3 is still opting to take it out. Uh, I'll show off at least this one that I always thought was really cool. Uh, I haven't done snaps in a while, so hopefully I can hit it. But you can actually make it to this window. Going towards C plat, if I can actually manage it. No, I'm not really managing right now, so sorry about that. I'm trying to remember, like, I literally haven't done this in, there we go, in about a month or so. So it's, the hands are, they're not warm. The hands are not warm, but there you go. I'm not really going to go into the details of snap sliding. There are other videos to really dive into the, the depths of that. So there you go. Just keep that in mind. Uh, important angles over here. You can actually sit on the ledge very deep over here, and you can catch people off guard a lot. Same with these corners heading towards tower. I think a lot of people forget about these corners. They are super useful for catching people off guard. Um, again, I mentioned at the beginning of this recharge that there's a ton of nades. Recharge especially has a ton of nades that I think are very effective at breaking the setup. This map is super setup based. Um, but we will talk about that in another video. So moving on to this can actually hit this lip, and I'm sure you guys have seen some videos of this as well, but hitting this lip is quite interesting, and it's not something that I've been able to consistently hit all the time, but there you go. It, it is not honestly as hard as I thought it would be, but I think the best way to think about it is that, like, you're essentially, you need to imagine your slide and your feet being ahead of, like, where your BR is. So, you know, if I'm sliding, my feet are in front of my BR. And you have to imagine that you're jumping, like, almost a little early compared to where, like, your face is mashing into the wall. So it's like, you almost need to mash jump or hit jump as soon as, like, you're, you can imagine your feet being slightly in front of your view being to hit that jump right there as consistently as it is. I forgot I practiced this for a while, so it's, it's honestly not as hard as uh, I remember it being. But I think it's just because of that concept that I feel like I learned where, like, this jump really is very useful. Um, but hitting it in the right opportunity is definitely going to prove to be very difficult. Because uh, it's, it's still not just something very, very easy to do. But it, it's very possible, as you can see. Obviously, many of you know of, you know, this jump to getting up to C plat. Also, you don't need to clamber. Um, you can make the jump without having to clamber. Especially if you have step jump on, it is possible. Just hold forward. But you can also make sure that you never hit clamber anyway, because you can stand along this pipe that's right here. It used to be that you could walk along this entire uh, ledge as if that pipe extended the entire way across this, but it is not possible uh, at all anymore from this side. Uh, this is just the physical pipe that's here now to kind of allow that, but never get caught off guard with a clamber coming up to C plat anymore as long as you, you know, you can even do it backwards. I think this is also super useful. As long as you're holding into the wall that you're walking, it's very useful. I also think it's very useful if, like, you're trying... Like, say, for example, you have camo. You just don't want to do the basic thing where, like, you're sitting in this corner right here clambering up and getting shot. Like, it's super basic. But you can literally hit you can hit the uh, pipe here and instantly start walking off. Moving a little bit too much. Walk off and then hit a clamber to, like, get the double stack or triple stack, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, yeah, this is very, very useful just to kind of, again, mix up. Mixing up is the key to having the ability to just throw your opponent off. And now, something that a lot of people don't know is that there's actually an invisible barrier right here that you can walk along so you don't have to clamber up to this ledge right here. You can even be waiting just kind of around this corner, deep in this corner right here, to kind of just be chilling. And, you know, you, you're, you're just ready. And then you're, you can even walk backwards if you want. You can come back in, cut the corner, just kind of sitting. Maybe somebody's going to slide out and they think you're sitting on the staircase where you're actually just sitting right here. But again, I think it's very useful to have somebody, you know, hit this corner towards this uh, blue box a lot of times. But uh, it's nice to just have, you know, the opportunity to be completely safe right here, as long as somebody's not shooting you from turbine or whatever. But you're you're just ready to act. You just you just keep hugging the wall, and you make it right in. Now, off of this information right here too, you can also hit this jump and make it to where these nades are. And this is honestly probably one of the hardest jumps in the game. And. There you go, I made it. It is very, it, it takes that exact concept that the tower one had, where you kind of have to hit the hook to go out and then come back in. 
but I, I think it's honestly way, way harder because of this uh, this like, little pain right here. It, uh, it just extends far enough to make things way more difficult, as well as uh, this this wall that just extends over where we're sitting in this, uh, this corner. But it is still possible. Again, I've done these things for hours and hours and hours trying to perfect it. So it's just something to keep in mind. Also, uh, you can make this jump to these, uh, these nades right here without having to hit clamber. However, it is a very, very tight window. You have to make sure that you're pretty much jumping at the edge of this, uh, the edge of this uh, staircase, this like first step. Otherwise, you will not be able to make it. It, it is honestly very, uh, very tricky. And even when you do hit it, it's not even like super clean. Like it's a very slow like slide over. Um, but it, it can, again, be very useful to just have your BR up. But there is a very sweet spot to uh, to hit. There we go. Okay. There is a sweet spot to hit uh, on the staircase. Once you kind of get a feel for it, you can kind of understand it. But again, it's very, very uh, niche. It's it maybe even is better on the left side here to kind of hit. Not too sure. Um, it seems pretty difficult from, like, the center for some reason. But there you go. That's actually not too bad. Uh, I even, again, learned something today. Doing this again, that makes it seem a little bit easier coming from the left side compared to the rest of the, uh, the ramp here. So, there you go. You have a, a means to have your BR ready to get into the fight, because a lot of times, you know, you're just getting engaged in the fight, and then you wanted to, like, jump up here, but you have to jump almost automatically. Even if you're in the fight, like, you need to just be ready to just go. And you need enough momentum, too. So that's why it can definitely be uh, fairly difficult to pull off consistently. And then again, you even have something like this, That'll just push you out, so you can't be too close to the wall while you're hitting this jump. But, you know, it, it is still very possible. Very, very possible, and a means to make sure you stay engaged in the fight without having to put your gun down. So that'll wrap up the recharge. We're going to move on to streets. And now we're going to move on to the final map, uh, being streets. Argyle is in the rotation right now, as well as uh, Pit will be in eventually. Um... So, I really haven't gotten the opportunity to walk along those maps just yet, so those videos will be coming soon. Alright, starting in sub, there really isn't... So, Streets, I feel like, is honestly a pretty uh, basic map. There's a few important spots that things can happen. And, you know, I'm going to show them off, obviously, but uh, this might be a little bit faster than the other ones. Something that's just basic that I don't think enough people know is that you can actually hit the just sprint thrust off of this box right here uh, to get you towards top balcony in case, you know, you're trying to hit a flank on somebody. Like, you know somebody's actually in here and you're trying to pressure them rather than running into, like, nades or a bulldog that's just hiding around that corner. You want to have, like, a different form of approach. So, you can actually just hit this, get up here, there you go. Uh, to build off that, you know, there are, again, some more snap slides. We've, you know, you've seen all these where you can, like, hit stalker or hit that ramp to get the stalker a little bit faster. Uh, something that people really don't utilize at all, maybe I've seen a few people start to utilize it a little bit, is that you can infinitely clamber these uh, these palm trees. Infinitely. As long as you're holding forward. So while I'm here, I'm, I'm jumping, I'm holding backwards a little bit, and then I'm holding forward to make sure that when I'm landing to clamber, I'm holding forward to clamber. Because if you're not holding forward to clamber, it just doesn't let you clamber, like so. And you can do this to both palm trees, just so you guys are aware. You can just sit. There's a certain spot on each palm tree or a certain zone on each palm tree that allows you to clamber it. Because if you go to a, the, like, the other half of it, so for example, um, this side of the palm tree seems to be where I can clamber on for this right one. However, if I try to go to like the back side of it, it doesn't really seem to be consistent or even possible uh, sometimes. But uh, let me give it one more try. Uh, it doesn't really work that way. It just kind of lets you glide past it. So it's very weird. And it's kind of the same thing with this palm tree where I can only really clamber on this side of it, uh, of the palm tree. But if I try to go over here, it won't let me do it. I just kind of glide right past it. But... You know, this is very good to stall out, honestly. Like, you're going to be very out in the open. However, you know, some things that I like to do is, like, you can actually uh, hit, like, consistent clambers and firing over this railing. Uh, if somebody happens to be, like, red and, like, you want to try to jump out, like, you just hit this clamber and then you can start fighting. And then as long as you practice this enough, I've done this before, you practice it enough, like, you can start hitting some consistent clambers and then hitting some consistent shots. Um... Even doing that, and then backing up, and then doing that, and then backing up, and then doing it again. 
It's very awkward, it's not easy, uh, but it is very possible. As well as building off of the momentum from clambering, you can jump off and then hit a thrust to make it over to this railing and vice versa. You can actually sprint thrust to the palm tree and then jump up into subway. Very unorthodox plays. However, in the right opportunities, these things can be very, very useful uh, to make a play. Highly recommend if you're in the right opportunity and you need something to just break it down. Like you want to try to get towards top sub, but you can't push purple. Your team's pushing flank market and you like back a guy down that was just fighting you here and you have thrust. Like that is very, very effective. It is <clears throat> very difficult to pull off though. Like I said, like if you're just fighting here, you got to get the right spot on the tree. You hit the clamber, you're in. You're basically just in. And the same thing over here too, at least with what I was talking about with fighting. You can do the same thing, fighting a guy on purple. It's so unorthodox. People do not, like, they're, they're just not ready for it. No one's ever ready for the, the palm tree play. Moving on, we have, obviously, the, uh, again, one of the most common jumps, the pizza jump. And for me, I have found the most uh, consistency. A, you have to have maintained sprint on. So I'll be sprinting. I hold crouch, and I turn. You want to make sure you always land on this light. Always hold crouch in the air, and you only have to press sprint once. So I hold crouch, turn, and then it automatically sprints for me because I have maintained sprint on. But you need to hold crouch, landing on it, turn. And again, when your gun goes down, that's when you let go of, uh, like, you can hear your feet click right there. You hear, like, the click of your feet on the light, and you let go of crouch and turn, and then you just jump. You almost jump instantly. I also, this is another one of those things I hold forward the entire time. I'm never letting go of holding forward. And it makes the momentum very easy. makes it very consistent. Um, yeah, it, it, that, that is just all I really need, I think, for this jump. I think that's all anybody really needs for this jump. I think it's very, very simplified, especially whenever you make it a science like this. There you go. I don't think I've missed it once. So there you go. And then also another means to make it up here, you can hit a thrust from around this grate sewer grate from right there and you can always hit a thrust from about that angle you can do it from a couple different spots but uh yeah that, that's where you can hit it as well very very consistent uh but you have to use your uh you have to use your thrust i think there's a few means of like hitting a slide off of this cooler i've never done it i've never even really tried to do it but very awkward there's of course i just want to show off the snap slide if i can hit it right now but snap slides were uh also a very effective means to make it happen. And unfortunately, it probably will be gone quite soon. Uh, close. But something of that sort. This red room has a few corners to kind of play off of, but something that I'm not sure many people are aware of is that you can actually sit on like this... Uh, sit on this sign right here in this corner. Both these corners, really. That corner is a little bit more iffy than this one is. This one's a lot more secure to just kind of chill in. Uh, but even with a little bit of drift, you have to make sure you're almost pushing in, like, you have to push into the corner the entire time. And hold crouch almost the entire time, too. You have to hold crouch to get in it. And, okay. You just need to make sure that while you're turning, you have to hold backwards. Which is very, very awkward. But sometimes having this, uh, having the means of... Oh, one second. Okay, you have to make sure you're just holding crouch the entire time. That's, that's the, the secret here, I guess. And then holding backwards. And then now I'm not now I don't have to hold anything. But getting into it is very awkward. You have to hold crouch the entire time. Then keep holding crouch, holding backwards, and then you even then you can kind of just like slip up. It's a very awkward corner, but these corners are very deep right here. Very useful. Same with these corners. Now, um something that I think people are not aware of either is that you can be deep in this corner and hit uh hit some curb slides off of these like signs and this light right here. You can hit a nice curb slide to uh, get yourself out of a deep corner if you need to move quickly, or just throw somebody off, uh, throw somebody off guard. Um, now I'm gonna perform a jump that I really don't see enough people pull off. It's also very awkward. It can be approached from a couple different ways in a couple different spots, but I think this jump right here is honestly very, very useful, and I don't see people use it nearly enough. Now I don't really know why it can be so hit or miss sometimes however all i can really say is you want to make sure you're always sprinting off the box i usually try to make sure i have enough momentum so that's why you kind of see me hook around again like i sprint facing the uh, cafe almost and then i'm gonna just hold forward the entire time i think that's uh, uh the trick to a lot of jumps in this game is like always holding forward so that you make sure you're just landing on whatever you're doing 
Uh, you can also hit from this ledge too, over here, holding forward the entire time. You can do the same thing from right here as well. Um, I literally haven't missed one yet. However, I've had plenty of times where, like even there, like it, it definitely felt a little bit limp of a jump. But like it, you just can't really tell why some of your jumps feel the way they do sometimes. Really don't know. Um, but these are very useful for stalling uh, and getting into the stronghold very quickly and just have a different approach. Or if, you know, you're pushing somebody back off from this side instead of like pushing around or pushing straight ahead, like you can just take a straight route in and just kind of take the fight straight to them rather than having to take a diagonal uh, and like take a flank, you know? You get to see exactly what's going on a lot of times. And then as well as, like I was saying from this hologram, uh, you can jump off of like these little shingles, whatever these are. And sometimes, like right there, it feels like it's kind of the same, but you just want to make sure you have enough momentum. And sometimes it just doesn't feel like it's landing. It, it's hard to explain the exact nature of it, but uh, yeah, maybe... Let me see something real quick. No. And no, I was going to say, maybe it's like has to do with where you're clambering at, but it seems like you can clamber the entirety of this, all of these. It just really does matter your height. The height really matters a lot. So you definitely need momentum. You definitely have to jump at the right time. If you jump too early, jump too late, you're really just missing it. So you're going you're to have to feel it out a little bit. You're going to have to feel it out just a little bit. And then now in the middle of the map, uh, there's a couple small things that I think people have started to realize a bit more. One thing that's always been kind of known now is uh, using these pipes at this laundry setup to jump in. You skip the climber entirely. However, this is also another opportunity to hit an over jump where you can just make your way straight in if you hit the corner of this uh, generator. And this is another one. Over jumping is very awkward. Um very weird to get used to. Um, I really haven't found the perfect use or like I, I'm not very conscious, especially in game, to use the overjump too much, especially one like this. It's very direct and you're probably going to get into somebody's face very early. I almost prefer to always be aiming at like the, the window here, tire window, rather than uh, trying to like look down at this generator while I'm running at it. But, you know, again, if you can pull it off consistently, then by all means, go for it. I'm just trying to give you the means to know that you can do it. And it's still very cool. Like, you're just instantly getting in very, very quickly. Um, and you're just in. Like, it, it, it will slow you down a bit. It's not almost... You don't overjump enough to cleanly, like, glide past it. But you will still make it without a clamber. So, just something to keep in mind. As well as another scam, uh, clamber skip is using these ATMs and these little glass planes... All of them have collision, so they all can be stood on, just like so. Now, what I find to be the best is honestly wedging yourself in the air into this wall, and then instantly jumping off of it like that. But you can still do... It's pretty easy, honestly, as long as you like don't move your... You don't want to move your left stick forward too much once you jump, or really at all. You just want to like leave your left stick um, completely open. And you will almost always land and instantly jump up without clambering, as long as your left stick's not being touched. But you, you also almost have to make sure you're coming at like a straight angle. If you come at it like a side angle, it can be very weird, I would say. Like, luckily I'm able to hit it right now, but either way, it still proves to be fairly consistent. The way I see it too is like, you want to make sure you're going for, uh, if you're going to like come at it from at an angle, rather than like jumping into this corner, you want to shoot for like being in between these two. So if you're in between the two, you're almost like guaranteed a step up, as you can see. They almost act as like one bridge with your footsteps. And you want to make sure you're not holding forward with clamber or with your jump, because then you might just clamber. So that's why you almost need to like let yourself fall a bit. And then you're able to just kind of get up there. But it's 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 very, very easy to uh, get the feel for it. You just kind of have to jump up. I'm trying to see if I can hit it from the side kind of consistently, which you, you can. You can hit it from any angle, but... You know, sometimes you feel like you're in a certain fight and you want to just get out. You still can do that, too. But I, I still just appreciate the uh, the instantaneous approach. You can jump kind of early, too. That, that's what I would suggest. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest, like, standing right in front of it to go for it. Sometimes you might have to. But it could be just very easy so that you don't have to even worry about a clamber, that your feet are almost landing on it right away, and you're just up and in. Um, so there you go. That, that can uh, hopefully give you the leg up whenever you're trying to approach Bulldog over here uh, a bit early. Uh, something, too, that 
I think is not probably utilized enough is like you can actually hit the curb slide off of this bulldog soda machine here. Um, it's very awkward sometimes though. I don't know. It has this certain type of height about it that makes it feel very awkward. But definitely something to utilize. All these things are something to utilize as well in all these aspects. And I'm just trying to look around some of these corners, some of these edges that people don't really find themselves in enough are very useful. I think a lot of more people have been sitting down here, sitting in these corners a lot, but you can even walk along this generator, kind of be hiding behind these pipes, cutting off this angle uh, from the market side. Uh, you still can hit this jump and this clamber up here, because this actually was very solid sitting up on this sign right here. People would always be sitting on this sign, watching, uh, watching like PD. You'd just be sitting right here, like cutting a head glitch. However, it's you're just kind of sliding right past it. However, you still again can make this clamber uh, very consistently. And one thing that again you can notice, you actually are walking up almost a minor ramp right here whenever you walk into these cables. As you can see, I'm like a little bit lower. Now I'm a little bit higher. A little bit lower. A little bit higher. So you want to try to get to the maximum height most of the time to jump up here, but again, it's still, this is another one of those things where it can feel very awkward to even try to, to even try to hit this jump. There, There's a lot of just invisible collision that can, like, keep you uh, from maintaining your, your momentum and things of that sort. Honestly, hitting it from an angle seems to kind of help quite a bit. Okay, this is actually the last thing. So, last little thing, you can actually... Skip your clamber another time right here on this trash. You just got to hold forward, hold crouch for both these jumps. But very useful because a lot of times people are just hiding here, ready for you, just waiting for you to jump up. So always want to try to stay as engaged in the first shot as you possibly can be. And this is this is definitely a difficult one too. If you're mistiming your jump or mistiming holding forward, you will definitely not make the jump. All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the second edition of all the map uh, movement, tips, tech, whatever really came to mind for me and all things that I've thought about and all things I've practiced. Hopefully I gave you guys the, uh, I'd given you guys the means to inspire you to hit some things and get some more consistency with all the map traversal. Uh, like I mentioned before, hopefully we'll do some more, uh, some more of this with maybe some map presence, positioning, and like some grenades. Uh, that I've found over this uh, this past year and let me know if that's something that interests you guys or if there's something else That's more pressing that you guys think is even more important uh, That you really want to see just let me know down in the comments and yeah Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys on the next lesson. Have a great rest of your day. Peace